EcoFlow is becoming one of the biggest names in solar power generators or portable power stations, and while their River series of products are a great starting point, the Delta series is definitely what you want when it's time to get serious. And this Delta 2 isn't the newest guy in the block, but it still has tons of features that everybody's looking for, and it's still got plenty of power. And in this video, we're going to see, is the Delta 2 still relevant in 2025? Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out the EcoFlow Delta 2 portable power station. And even though the Delta 3 series is already out, we're going to be checking out this model to see if it's still worth buying. So think about this as maybe you're in the market for a big power station and you see this one on sale, or maybe find it used somewhere from somebody that's upgraded. So we're going to go through all the features, we're going to test them out, and we're going to see how good this thing still is in 2025. So first things first, apologies for all the mess in the background. Other projects that are going on, this thing is so big I had to bring it out to the big workbench instead of my normal bench that I usually record on. And quite honestly, I'm just running out of room to put big stuff. So here we are in the middle of a bunch of mess, but this is the star of the show and we're going to be checking this thing out. So let's talk first about the features. So whenever I'm talking about specs for these things, I always start with the two most important. And that is how much power does it have and how long can it provide that power. So we're talking about max power output and then we're talking about capacity. So we're going to look at all the different power options that come out of this thing. But we're going to start right here with the AC ports. Think about if you're either overlanding or if you've got a power outage at home. This is where you're going to be plugging in your refrigerators and stuff like that that's essential. So you want to know that this thing has enough power to provide to whatever type of devices you have. And this one certainly does. So we're looking at 1800 watts shared between these six AC outlets. And there is a surge power also, and there is also an X boost that you can enable. But I never worry about those. I just think about what it's rated for continuously, and that's 1800 watts. And that's quite a bit. Think about just basically anything that you can plug into one of your home outlets. This thing's going to be able to power it. And if you have several devices, you've got plenty of power to share. So with 1800 watts power output, the next thing we need to worry about is what the capacity is. So built into this thing is just over 1000 watt hours of battery. It's 1024 to be exact, but we'll just call that 1000 for easy math. So that basically means the amount of watt hours you have is how many watts you can provide out of this thing for how many hours. So in the easiest scenario of 1000 watt hours, if you had a device plugged in here that was 1000 watts, it would last one hour. If you had a device that was plugged in that was only 100 watts, it would last for 10 hours. And these are just ballpark numbers, but they're just meant to give you an idea of how long your stuff is going to run. Now, in addition to the internal batteries, there is a port on the back side here we'll look at in a second where you can plug in external batteries. And EcoFlow has one model that's in another 1,000 watt hours and a bigger one that's 2,000 watt hours. So you can make up to two or 3,000 watt hours of capacity depending on which batteries you plug in. So now that we know the two big features, the 1800 watts output, the 1000 watt hours of capacity, let's talk about some of the other features. And we'll stay right here in the back. We've got a cigarette lighter port back here, or auto accessory port, and it's your basic 12 or 12.6 volts at 10 amps max, so about 126 watts. So if you have devices that plug into a cigarette lighter port, this is very convenient. It's got a separate button back here that you can turn on and off that port. And in addition to the cigarette lighter port, you've got two barrel connectors back here that are also 12.6, but only at 3 amps each. And included in the box is a little DC cable here that's got a DC 5521 on one end and a DC 5525 on the other end. So if you have some kind of device that requires a DC input, then this cable may work for you. Or you can just get the right cable adapter for whatever device it is. So think about a device like a cable modem or your router. You'd be able to plug that in here and save your AC output and it'd be a lot more energy efficient also. So we've seen all the outputs on the back here. We'll look at the inputs in a little bit. Let's go ahead and flip this thing around and look at the outputs on the front. So on the front site, we keep it nice and clean. We've got a couple USB ports out here. We've got the really nice display. We got the power button, but all the big bulky cords are gonna be in the back. So right up front here, we've got a bunch of USB ports. We've got four right across the top here, which are USB A's. And we've got two over here, which are your standard five volts at 2.4 amps. 
or 12 watts each. And each of these ports do get 12 watts. There's 24 watts total. And on the right side, we have quick charge, which are good for up to 18 watts each or 36 watts total. So that's gonna handle any type of phone type device. But if you've got something like a laptop or a tablet that needs more power, we've got the two USB-C ports down here that are rated for power delivery up to 100 watts, and that is 200 watts total. So whether you're charging laptops, tablets, or maybe even smaller power stations, that 200 watts is gonna come in handy. Now in addition to the ports, you've got the button here to turn these guys on, and then we've got the main button here to turn on the main display. So on the main display, you're gonna have a battery percentage right here in the middle. You're gonna have a power output and a power input over here on the right. And then based on what you're doing, whether you're charging or discharging, it's gonna have a timer over here that shows you how much time left it is to charge this up or how much time you have running based on how much you're outputting. So speaking of charging up, we're only at 32%. It's a good opportunity to go ahead and grab the AC cable that comes with it. And it is a big, chunky AC cable. And we can get this thing plugged into the wall, start charging it up, and talk about some of the charging specifications. So before I plug in this AC cable here, let's talk about what the charging options are in the back. And underneath this little trap door in the back has the AC input, which allows you to charge this at up to 1200 watts. And that's controllable by the app. You can change the speed that it charges at, and we'll look at that. But at 1200 watts, if you need this thing charged up fast, it'll charge this up all the way to the top in about an hour. In addition to that, we've got the XT60 input here, which is for basically our solar input, but also a car input because it comes with a cigarette lighter port to XT60, and it's actually an XT60i connector. So you can actually drive around in your car, plug this into your car, plug this in, and charge it up while you're driving. Now that's going to be limited to about 100 watts input, but 100 watts is still plenty of power to top this thing off in between trips or camping sites, or if you've got a really bad power outage and you just need to get some juice into it, you can use your car to do that. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in, turn it back around and watch the screen and see how fast it can charge. All right, so after I plugged it in, we got a couple clicks in there as the inverter is kind of negotiating how much power it wanted to draw, and it has jumped right all the way up to 1144 watts input. And as you can probably hear, the fans have kicked on. Got to keep that air moving through there to keep the batteries and the inverter nice and cool. So now it's probably a good time to go ahead and jump into the app and see what kind of controls we have over the charging speed. And we can also check the temperature of the batteries while we're in the app. So here we are inside the app, and you can see my Delta 2 is charging at 1.15 kilowatts or basically 1150 or so watts input and we can see the battery status climbing up there 33.58 percent right now and if we tap on that it brings up what the temperature is so it says it'll take about 53 minutes to charge this all the way up and we're looking at 66 degrees fahrenheit right now so we're doing great as far as temperature goes now let's take a look in the settings at where we can change the charging speed and what our options are. So let's go into settings, AC charging speed, and we're set right now at 1200. And we've got a slider down here that we can change that from 200 all the way up to 1200. But we've got two other settings up here. One is optimized battery charging, which means it's gonna charge at the speed that is optimized for battery health. Because although this thing can charge at 1200 watts, that's not always the best for the batteries. So let's go ahead and select that, and we can see that drop down to 500 watts. And just as it did, you can see the input here is down to 480 or so, and the fans have really ramped down. Now, of course, if we go back to the main screen, we'll see that we're looking at now an hour 48 minutes to get that charged up instead of an hour. But if you're not in a rush, that's probably a good thing to do is to keep it on the safer speed to help those batteries stay longer. So let's look at the other options we had in there. The next one down is called quiet charging. So this means it's going to charge at a slower speed so that the fans are even quieter. Now the fans right now are considerably quieter than they were before, but let's see what happens when we do that. So now we've jumped all the way down to 200 watts. It says it's going to take five hours to completely charge. And the fans are still spinning. We still have the indicator on the screen here of the fan spinning. And I haven't heard them change yet, but once it gets to a certain temperature, they may spin down even lower. But it's nice that it gives us all those options. We get the two different presets here, or we can just use the slider to pick whatever speed we want. 
Now we talked about the solar input in the back and we said that you can get about 100 watts coming in from a car. But if you're using solar panels, it will accept anywhere from 11 to 60 volts at 15 amps, or a total power input of 500 watts max. So if you're using this with some portable solar panels, a nice 400 watt panel would be perfect for this. Just make sure you check the voltage and the current. Or if you've got this hooked up to your home system, then configure those panels to where it's optimized for 500 watts. And this thing will charge up in about two hours at that 500 watts. Now the next thing I want to do is test the AC output. So I'm going to go grab something to plug into it. And we're going to see if it's got pass-through charging where you can take power from the wall coming in here. And also have power coming out of here to some AC device. So give me a second to set that up and I'll be right back. Alright, so I've got a little space heater here plugged into the back. And I turned on the AC ports. I haven't turned this on yet. It's got two speeds that we can test out. And what I want to show you first is we are still charging at about 215 watts. And it says four hours and three minutes until it's full. So what I want to see is if I turn this on, is it going to be pulling from the batteries? Or is it going to be pulling from the wall directly through this thing? So let's go ahead and turn this on. So that's the low setting and we can see the output watts is about 222 watts. Now what it did was it jumped up the input to basically add that output to the 200 watts that was coming in already. So now it's got 433 watts coming in because 200 of it's coming to the space heater, 200's going to the batteries to keep it charged. So if we look at our charge time, it's still sitting there at four hours and two minutes. So let's go ahead and jump this thing up to the higher speed. And now the space heater is using 450 watts, and it's basically, again, added that to the 200 coming in, and our charge time is still 4 hours and 2 minutes. So that's what you call pass-through charging. Now what's happening is the power is coming from the wall into the station. It's going directly to here, so if we had a power outage right now, it's going to take a little time to convert over to where the inverter starts powering the output here. But for most devices, that's just fine. If we have the power outage, no big deal. But this way you can have this somewhere in your house and you can have it actually powering devices and staying fully charged up at the same time. All right, the next thing I want to test is these USB-C outputs here. I trust that the USB-A ports work just fine, but I want to see if I can get 100 watts out of these things. And I definitely want to see if I can get 200 watts total coming out. So to test that out, I've got this Anchor Solix C300DC, which has two input ports here that will allow up to 140 watts each. So you can charge this thing up to 280 watts coming into it, but we're going to get hopefully around 200. We're going to lose a little bit in conversion, but let's see what we can get. So to test this out, you got to make sure you've got cables that are rated for at least 100 watts, and these anchor cables are. So let's go ahead and plug in one of these on the left, and then plug that in right down here, and turn on our USB ports. And the anchor is going to boot up here, it's going to take a couple seconds for the USB-C ports to negotiate, and it looks like it's already done. We've got 97 watts coming in here. So let me bring that closer to the camera. 97 watts, we are charging up. And it's showing that we've got 96 watts coming out. We still have 215 watts coming in, and our charge time has gone significantly up. So it looks like we don't have pass-through charging all the way to the DC ports. These are coming straight from the battery. So let's go ahead and set up the second cable here and plug that into the Anchor Solix. And after a little bit of negotiating, we've got 192 watts coming in here. And it's showing about 194 watts coming out. So now it's gonna take 11 hours to charge this up because we're using just about all the input. But that's okay, we can always boost that input up. It's just impressive to see that we're able to put 200 watts coming out of these USB-C ports simultaneously. So I'm satisfied with the tests that we've done. We've tested the input charging speed, we've tested the AC output, we've tested the power delivery outputs, and we tested the pass-through charging on the AC side. Only thing I didn't show you was the solar charging, and that's quite honestly because we've got a lot of snow today and all of my panels are completely covered. But with 500 watts input, you've got plenty of opportunity to get some solar power into this thing. If you want to do some off-grid camping, or even have this maybe out in a shed to run some tools and keep it topped off with some solar panels. 
So we set out today to find out if this Delta II was still a valid power station in 2025, and I think I can equivocally say absolutely. This thing started out at about $1,000, and right now it's about half that price. So by buying something that's not the newest thing on the shelf, you're going to save a lot of money and get a lot of bang for the buck. Even after you buy it, you've got expandability as far as those extra batteries that you can plug in. And with lithium iron phosphate batteries inside this thing, it's going to last you for close to 10 years. So it's easy to see why this Delta series is becoming the center point for a lot of home solar systems with six AC outputs, six USB outputs, and three DC outputs. You can power all kinds of things. Now, how does this compare to the newer Delta 3? Well, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I've got a Delta 3 review coming up soon. And then after I fully review both of them, I'm going to have a comparison video where I show what you're really getting if you upgrade from the Delta 2 to the Delta 3 or if you go ahead and just skip the Delta 2 and buy the Delta 3. So stay tuned for those, hit that subscribe button, and I'll be happy to test those out for you. But I think that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you got something out of it, I appreciate a thumbs up. That helps the channel. Speaking of the channel, go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. I've got lots of reviews on power stations and basically anything else geeky. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. But I thank you as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.